as the pain and the disappointment grows. I don't know if that's you this morning, but I've come to tell you that you're going through the process. And even though it's hard, you're not yet due for delivery. For when the time of your delivery comes, you will give birth to the promise. And the promise will not be miscarried or aborted in the name of Jesus. You shall deliver in the due time in the name of Jesus. It shall come to full term. Mary's cousin had already been visited by the angel Gabriel and was told she too was going to have a son in her old age. She was six months pregnant. And when Mary heard about it, she hurried and went to Elizabeth. And as she greeted Elizabeth, the baby in Elizabeth's womb was filled with the Holy Ghost. She too was a carrier of a promise. Three months to go, waiting for the delivery of the promise of John, the forerunner of Jesus. And Elizabeth said to Mary in a loud voice, Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And why am I so blessed that the mother, mother of my Lord has come to visit me? Brothers and sisters, the promise very often comes with confirmation. Yes. Elizabeth confirmed the promise that the angel Gabriel gave to Mary. The promise. It may be an assignment. It may be a direct word that the Lord has given you. You may have had a dream where the Lord shows up. It may be a prophetic word. It may be something that the Lord showed you in the scripture. But you have been blessed with a promise and you're still waiting for the delivery. What has God promised you? A few years ago, I don't, I hope Samantha doesn't mind me sharing this. When Samantha was about five years old, I saw her preaching the gospel. But not only did I see her preaching the gospel, I saw her with a prophetic anointing. And I remember ringing Eric. And so I was praying and I saw your daughter at five years old. And I sat down and I waited for that promise to take place. And how many weeks ago, Samantha? A few weeks ago. The promise gave birth. The promise was delivered. But Samantha took her first step mm -hmm. in preaching the gospel Hallelujah. of the Lord Jesus. And you are pregnant with a promise Amen. because the prophetic Amen. word will come to pass Amen. in the name of Jesus. And it will not be aborted or miscarried in Jesus' name. Amen. Pregnant. Yes. Pregnant. Yes. Glory to God. With a promise. And Mary received the promise while she was engaged to Joseph. Before they came together, before the actual marriage took place, she was pregnant. She was now unmarried and pregnant and had to face the real reality of life, the criticisms, the whispers, the pointing of fingers, the isolation, the outbreak of Joseph as he became distant. For whatever reason, he did not understand the promise. And I believe that Mary would have explained it many times before. Mary, how did this happen? 
I've been engaged to you. I thought you were better than that. And Mary said, Joseph, I've already told you that the angel came to me and told me that I would bear a son and his name would be called Jesus. And Joseph, what sort of nonsense is that? Holy Spirit, pregnant with a promise, that's an excuse for bad behavior. Who is the man? And the Bible says that Joseph was planning secretly to put Mary away because he did not understand the promise. Oh, brothers and sisters, sometimes people won't understand the promise because you have been pregnant and you don't even understand it yourself. Many years when the Lord touched me and I found myself preaching and I said, God, I don't want to be loud. I want to be as quiet. I didn't even understand it myself because every time I come up here and if you notice even on this page try speak slowly not loud a reminder oh when God put a promise in you when you're pregnant with a promise sometimes it's hard to understand So Joseph secretly planned to break off the engagement. He did not want to expose her to public disgrace. And Mary began to go to the process. Joseph is pulling back. He doesn't want to talk to her. He's questioning her. Mary, will you just tell me the truth? Maybe I will just forgive you. Tell me the truth, Mary. What, Holy Spirit? What is happening? And Joseph decided it's time to secretly divorce you from my life. Brothers and sisters, some will try to abort the promise. Some will try to push you away because they don't understand the promise. And many times, because the process is hard, you feel like you're going through a miscarriage. And you feel that your promise will not be delivered. But I decree and declare that you will not be induced. You will give birth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your promise will come to birth. The process. Yes, it comes with challenges and questions and isolations and alienations. It comes with the Josephs trying to secretly put you away because of lack of understanding. But God will send somebody at the right time and show up on your behalf. Hallelujah. And the promise will give birth. Hallelujah. It will come to fruition. And while Joseph was trying to secretly break off the engagement an angel showed up thank God for Jesus thank God for angels hallelujah an angel of the Lord showed up to Joseph in a dream how many dreamers are here sometimes pay attention to your dreams because the angel of the Lord very often shows up in a dream And the angel said to Joseph, don't put away your wife. That woman you're engaged to. For that which is in her womb is 
conceived by the Holy Ghost. And she will give birth to a son. And his name shall be called Jesus, the Savior of the universe, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. The promise will give birth. It will come to his fruition at the right time. Come on and give the Lord a man and the Lord of earth a praise. The promise will be delivered. Hallelujah. When you're pregnant with a promise, the Lord will show up and bring your promise to pass. The census. I'm talking about the process. Joseph secretly put in, trying to put away Mary. And now there is a census. Mary is heavily pregnant. And there's a census from Caesar Augustus that all the Roman world requires everyone to go to his town to register. So Joseph left Nazareth and went to the town of Bethlehem to register because he belonged to the lion of David. Mary had received the promise. She had already gone through the rough time and the trauma with Joseph. Now there was a census. And the Bible said that Joseph took Mary with him on the journey. That was about a hundred miles away. How many pregnant women are here today? Are you on a journey? It may seem far. But do you know what it feels like? <coughs> to be heavily pregnant. And going on a journey of about a hundred miles away. There were no aeroplanes. No buses. No cars. No bicycles. <laughs> no bikes. And so whether they traveled on a donkey or on foot, it would have been a difficult journey, especially for a heavily pregnant woman. And those of us who have been pregnant before, we know what it feels like. God, why do I have to go through this? I'm pregnant with the promise and it's hard. Isn't it enough? Am I not going to enough? A hundred miles journey? Some of us are pregnant with a promise, but we find ourselves at the wrong location. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But the delivery of your promise is tied to your location. There is a set time and a set place for you to give birth. Some may have to leave Nazareth and find your way to Bethlehem. A long, long way. Some may have to travel to the wilderness. But you're going to your promise. Some may have to go to the desert. Oh, but you're on your way to your promise. Oh, God. My journey has been long and hard. Pregnant with a promise. But I'm in to go through the process. Mary was going through the pangs of labor. As time progressed, the labor pain increased. The promise had reached fruition and the baby was getting ready for delivery. And whilst heavily pregnant, Mary and Joseph went to the inn 
or to the hospital to deliver the baby. And they knocked on the door of the inn. The baby is coming. I'm pregnant with a promise. I can feel I'm about to push and give birth. Let me in. And they knocked on the door. Somebody came and said, I'm sorry. But the baby is coming. I'm sorry. But there is no room in the inn. Joseph said, my wife is heavily pregnant. Can't you see she's about to give birth? Oh, sir, I am sorry. There is no place in the inn. Oh, Mary and Joseph, they were desperate. She feeling like she wants to push. She needs somewhere urgently. The promise was about to be delivered. I'm sorry, but there is no room in the inn. And Mary and Joseph went to the place of how. How can this be? Where can we go? How can the Lord give me a promise? And I've gone through all the process and there is no provision. Where is the provision? Where is my birthing place? And they're disillusioned. Didn't God promise? Didn't the angel Gabriel say? Even my cousin Elizabeth confirmed. So what's happening? I'm pregnant with the promise. But where is the provision? Where is my place of delivery? I'm a carrier of purpose. Yet there is no room in the inn. And after possibly many unsuccessful attempts, she was directed to a stable. A stable? Where the animals lay? Among the, the hay? Among the, the animals? Where is the bed? Where is the pillar? Where do I lay to deliver and push and give birth? The only place was in the stable. Hallelujah. Mary, the carrier of promise, was about to give birth in the most unlikely place in a stable. Brothers and sisters, God will show up in the most unlikely place and you will give birth. She's about to deliver the savior of mankind. No pillar to rest her head on. No mattress to lie on. No crib for the baby. No mat to change him on. And what else do we need for babies? No toy to play with. How many babies are in the house? And Mary is going to the rigors of childbirth. The labor pains are vicious. She's crying, but somebody said, Mary, push. Yes. Push, Mary, push. You're about to deliver the promise. Push, Mary. And she said, oh, it's hard. It's long. I want the promise out now. She's learning to push in this table. She's in the process of delivering the promise, but it's hard and it's painful. And the midwife is saying, push through the pain, push through the barriers, push through the despair, but push until the baby is delivered. How many of you are going through the process? God says push. Yes. It's pushing time. Yes. It's time to deliver. Hallelujah. The promise. I decree and declare that your promise will be delivered in the right time. Yes. 
in the due process. Your promise could be delivered. She's tired and frustrated because the promise is slow to come. She has no control over the timing. She has to wait until the delivery takes place. It's uncomfortable because she's in a stable. She's birthing the promise in the most unlikely place. Oh, brothers and sisters, when God cannot find the available, he'll use the unavailable. After hours of waiting and pushing, exhaustion and relief shook hands as the promise was born. Jesus, the Savior of humanity, was born for his name shall be called the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. The promise was born. A provision was found. Mary had given birth. Had given birth to the promise. Mary's status changes. She became a mother. She became a carrier. She knows what it is to feel the pain. To bring forth to push, to deliver, to wait, to persevere. She understands the discomfort of carrying and the joy of delivering. She knows what it is to give birth in a high place. She understands the promise, the process, and the provision. After all of that Mary had been through after receiving the promise after going to the process the hardship and the despair and the disappointment she gave birth to a promise something supernatural that was about to change the course of humanity she went through the promise and the process and the provision and Mary held her baby in the hand and she lifted it up and she said all the pain and all the disappointment and all the problems this is worth it all hallelujah it's worth it all and how many of you would have gone hallelujah all around the train just to get to the place of provision are you like Mary, who have been pregnant with a promise and waiting for your moment of delivery, but it hasn't happened yet? Are you going through the process and it's hard? Is someone trying to abort your promise? Do you feel like you're about to miscarry because of the pressures of life? But I say this morning, don't let anyone cause you to abort your ministry or your promise. Because you will give birth in the most unlikely place. Are you going through the process where it's difficult and you're discouraged, you're tired and frustrated and you feel like giving up because it's too difficult? Are you wondering where the provision for the promise will come from? Oh, and when will you give birth? <coughs> this morning, I decree and declare that when the time is right, your ministry will come and not delay. Your promise will not be aborted or miscarried. It will be delivered at the appointed time in the name of Jesus. For in the most unlikely place, God will show up and birth in your situation. As long as you're pregnant with a promise, God will make the provision for the delivery. May God birth favor 
in your situation today. I want you to say in the name of Jesus. As I respond, as I say that, just repeat and say in the name of Jesus. May God birth favor in your situation today. May it cause you to deliver your promise without delay. In the name of Jesus. May every door that has been closed to your breakthrough and deliverance be opened in the name of Jesus. May it qualify you for greatness and success. In the name of Jesus. May you be a carrier of a great promise. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. children of God we are carriers of promise and purpose the Holy Spirit the spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in us and the Bible said that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and you shall give birth to your destiny in the most unlikely place Today I talked about the promise, the process, and the provision. I don't know where you're at on your journey. You may be standing on the platform of your promise and wondering, how is it going to happen? You may be going through the process with a lot of stumbling blocks and setbacks. But don't let anyone abort your promise. Don't let anyone cause you to miscarry your ministry. You may be wondering, where is the provision? For the promise. And when is delivery going to take place? Brothers and sisters. Don't give up. Because in due time. God will bring you to a place of delivery. And he will make the provision for you. I decree this morning. That your promise will not be aborted. You've come through another year. With your head held high. And all that you have been through, you're still standing. Glory. Turn to your neighbor and say, after all I've been through, I'm alive. I'm still standing. Glory. After all that you have been through, you're still standing. Oh, is there anyone who can wave their hand? I say, I've been through the mail. I've been through the desert. I've been through the barriers. But I am still standing. After all, I have been through. I'm still standing. Because I'm about to give birth to my promise. Clap your hands and give him praise. The promise will be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pregnant with a promise. I'm still waiting on the fulfillment. The other day I was praying in my room after I've read Isaiah 45. And I began to declare the words of the scripture. And as I declared the words of the scripture, God said he's going to level mountains and hills. He's going to break down the bronze walls and smash the gates. He's going to give us the treasures stored in dark and secret places. And all of a sudden, as I'm reading and declaring it, I said, God, I remember Beacon. We need a new church, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to enter the dark and secret place. And in my, as I sat down, I began to enter. I said, God, I'm going where a lot of people are there to tread. But I'm going into the dark and the secret places and take back all that the enemy has stolen in the name of Jesus. And I began to take back. I began to take back. I said, I drive out the Hittite. I drive out the Perizzite. I drive out the Amorite. I drive out the Zemophites. I drive out the Philistines in the name of Jesus, and I put a bloodline around our territory in the name of Jesus, for this promise shall
shall not be aborted. It shall not be miscarried. In the name of Jesus, we will give birth to the promise. Amen. Amen. That's right. As I entered the dark and the secret places, I could see myself going in those dark and secret places and all of a sudden I see demons began to tremble I see them going in, in Jamaica they say pitch Papa lake yes. I don't know anybody I don't know if you understand that yes. yes what do they call it over here sister <laughs> when as a baby you um, go on your head and then you turn all the way over I see them pitching Papa Lake in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I put a blood mark around the territory. And as I entered there, something strange happened. Immediately, I got dumb. I couldn't move. I could hardly breathe. And I realized that I've entered a territory. The dark and the secret places. And it happened four times. And the Lord began to talk to me. He said, before you enter, you release the power around you. The angel of the Lord encamps around me. The Lord is the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. And I began to put the blood line around me. And never again has it happened. The promise will give birth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Here you are. You're still standing. 2013. I've seen a lot of hardships, a lot of sickness, a lot of pain. But God, what God promised will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.